So you saw the Tank 300 and you loved it. It looks rugged, it can go off-road, a bit of luxury, but you just wanted something bigger. Well, here it is, the Tank 500, the bigger brother to the Tank 300. Don't ask me why we got the bigger brother after the smaller brother. Maybe the mother thought the father had one child until she got a phone call one day and realized she thought wrong. There is another child and here it is, the Tank 500. And this is going up head to head with the Toyota Prado Land Cruiser. In terms of dimensions, it's 5078 millimeters long, which is 158 millimeters longer than a Prado. In terms of height, it's 1005 millimeters high, which is 35 millimeters taller than a Prado. In width, it's 1933 millimeters wide, which is 47 millimeters narrower than a Prado. And in terms of weight, is 5,589 pounds, which makes it 551 pounds heavier than a Toyota Prado Land Cruiser. And I keep using the Toyota Prado Land Cruiser nameplate because they made no secret of it. That is who they are going up against. The Tank 500 was designed, built, and manufactured to be a competitor to the Toyota Prado Land Cruiser. And given the fact that Toyota Prado is between 1.3 and 1.6 million, the disrespectfulness in it is that they are not only saying we can challenge you at the top of your game, but we can do what you do and do it cheaper. So let's see if GWM really pulled it off. The first thing that catches everybody's eyes and it also catched mine is how large and imposing the front of this vehicle is. It reminds me of those large Ram trucks from America that are not even trying to be aerodynamic. It's just there in your face like, boom, I am here. That is what the front of this vehicle looks like. A large surface area, a large chrome grille, and it's not even trying to be aerodynamic. It's not hiding the fact it's a large vehicle. It's large and it wants you to know it's a large vehicle. And I like that. While other vehicles are big and they're essentially wearing the automotive version to a waist trainer trying to contour the lines and make the vehicle look smaller, it's a large vehicle and it embraces its largeness. It has a large chrome grille to the front. There are chrome accents below. All of this actually makes the front look wider than it is, even though it's already a big vehicle. For your lighting, you have all LEDs. Daytime running lights, turn signals, high beam, low beam, and the lights at the bottom that we call fog lights, all LEDs. The indicators are segmented, so you have four elements on either side. So four on the left, four on the right. Now the lighting assembly does something pretty cool. When you're walking up to the vehicle with the key fob on your person, what it does, it powers on the headlight. Now this is it recognizing that you are close by and it's preparing for you to open the door. So you will see the turn signals come on in the individual element, then the daytime running lights, then the ring around the headlights. The unfortunate thing is that it cuts off. I think it should have programmed it to stay on. Look at it in slow motion. You have the turn signals powering on, then you have the daytime running lights, then the ring around the headlights. After this, rather than cutting off, this is how it should have stayed. At least for about 10 seconds, you are already flexing. If you're flexing, flex all the way. Let people see your headlights powering up in stages. Moving away from the front, let's talk about the wheels. You have two 65, 60, 18s. And everybody who I've heard comment on the vehicle, including myself, these wheels look really, really small on a vehicle this large. And while it doesn't look bad, I'm still thinking maybe if they put 19 inches, it will look better. But you can always upgrade after the fact. You can put on 19, 20s, 21s, 22s. I'm sure 22s will fit on this vehicle just fine. And just for the off-roading guys, just like I did with the Tank 300, I'm going to show you all the suspension on the Tank 500 as well because the gap is so large that I can fit my entire hand and camera inside the wheel well to show you all around. Everything in front here looks big and robust as you would expect on a vehicle that is weighing 5,000 plus pounds. And given the fact that this is supposed to be a highly capable off-roading vehicle with all the different modes, four-wheel drive, diff lock, front, rear, it's supposed to have beefed up components because in theory, you are supposed to be able to take this vehicle off-road. Just like the Tank 300, the big brother is that, just on steroids. Moving further to the side, you have the side steps. Now, real off-roading men are already saying you cannot go off-roading with low-hanging side steps. You're going to get caught up on a rock and it's going to get ripped off. But notice the side steps are not visible here. That's because when not in use, they actually retract into the side of the vehicle. For example, while you are driving or while the vehicle is locked and parked, the side steps are retracted. If you walk up to the key fob or you unlock it, the side steps fold down. And they actually extend or retract really quickly. By the time you get to your vehicle, they are already down. Time to step on it and get into your vehicle. No long delay. You don't have to wait like, okay, it's still unfolding. It's either in or it's out. And at 230 plus pounds standing on it, I can tell you, it's really sturdy. And on top of that, you also have settings inside on your infotainment to adjust when it comes down. So you have some control over it as well. Moving to the rear of the Tank 500, same thing with the rear lights, all LEDs. You have this chrome piece that runs along the side here, then you have it over the spare wheel cover, and it goes to the other side. On the spare wheel cover, 
you have your rear view camera which is part of the 360 camera system you have your third brake light right there under the spoiler and then you have this chrome piece again coming around the rear lighting assembly and the thing is even though the entire lighting assembly except the reverse lights look red the indicators which are the two on top are red only until activated and then they turn yellow so i think that's pretty cool it looks red but nope it's actually yellow here we have a closer look at your eight and a half inches of ground clearance so this is eight and a half inches as is with the 18 inch wheels on obviously if you put on bigger rims and tires you're gonna get more inches but this eight and a half inches is what you get out the box and lastly you do get roof rails because i mean obviously a vehicle at this price point that is supposed to be a full size suv that is off-road capable you must have roof rails as well in case you want to carry even more stuff on your roof while we are at the back here one thing i did not expect is that the trunk door is soft closing you see that so you can't even slam it you push it in and it's like i'll take it from here the tank 500 is a seven seater but like most seven seaters the six and seven seats literally for children they are comfortable as you can see they are comfortable you do have cup holders on the left and the right you do have ac vents above your head but aside from that from a comfort standpoint it's for children also if you need the two rear seats folded up you only end up with 98 liters of trunk space so keep that in mind but the cool thing is how the rear seats fold up and down they are both electric you have a pair of switches right here on the rear left and you also have a pair of switches by the middle row on the right hand side so if you're just lazy and you find I spent seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I can't be bothered to lift up rear seats myself. You hit the switch and they fold down. The trim piece at the bottom also goes down with them, but because the seat belts were anyway, they got jammed. So as soon as I moved the seat belts, they just fell flat, and you have a completely flat surface. And now with the sixth and seventh rear seats folded down, trunk space goes up from ninety-eight liters to seven hundred and ninety-five liters. And if you need even more space than that, you can fold down the middle row. And it goes up from 795 liters to 1459 liters so you have all the space in the world as long as you don't need those six and seven seats if you do have these six and seven seats up and you have kids at the rear then they have lights or reading or whatever they need lights for but if these six and seven seats are down these lights just turn into trunk lights you also have handles to hold on to in case you need to hold on you can see a rear seat belts there and you also have rear ac vents in the roof which are controlled via a rear ac vent panel because this vehicle is tri-zone now the tank 500 is not only a full-size suv that can take you off-road but take you off-road in luxury so let's see if it lives up to that hype starting with the rear door panel first thing you notice soft touch materials everywhere everywhere you touch has a soft touch leather feel they also have wood grain finish throughout the entire vehicle even in the door pocket which is normally a bottle holder you have velvet soft touch materials the only other vehicle i've seen this on so far range rovers where you have soft touch velvet materials even where your hands generally are not supposed to be at first glance even without anyone telling you that this was a luxury vehicle just by how it looks you can tell it's a luxury vehicle the way the wood grain finish runs above the back of the front seats the way the rear seats look the way everything is laid out you can tell that this is supposed to be a luxury vehicle you even have the sunshade on the door now it's not electric you have to manually put it up but it's there so you can have the sunshade up and the glass down or you can have the sunshade down and the glass up any combination you want you can have it even when i took the camera down low to an angle where the average person unless you are a car detailer would never be looking at a vehicle at you can tell that the fit and the finish goes from the ground all the way to the roof staying with the rear most vehicles have perfect front seats for the front passenger and driver and then things just fall apart at the rear the tank 500 has luxurious seats even at the rear and they are ventilated the front heated and ventilated the rear ventilated the most comfortable seats ever the kind of seats that make you want to sit in the back and just relax as somebody drives you along again staying with the rear because the tank 500 is tri-zone so you have dual zone to the front and a single zone to the rear so you can control your temperature on your left and your fan speed on the right the two dials at the bottom control your ventilated seats so turning them to the right will turn up the ventilation turning them to the left will turn down the ventilation then you have a different mode you can either get air from these two vents here alone or you can get air from the two vents here or you can adjust it to only get air from the roof or roof and the vents here so you have all your climate controls the typical things you will find to the front you now have to the rear now it must be noted that whatever the third row does also controls the ac vents to the back so if you have the six and seven seats up that control panel will also control the temperature of the air coming out of these vents here going back to the rear control panel 
Below all these switches, you have a little pocket that you can fold out and behind that, you can find a USB-C, USB-A and a 120 watt 12 volt power outlet. So you have all the connections you can hope for. In the roof, this is the vent I was talking about. So you have a vent above your head, left and right. You have your handle to hold on to and a reading light. Stepping into the front, the luxury continues. For starters, you have a 14.6 inch infotainment screen. That is larger than most vehicles infotainment screens on the market right now. You also have a 64 color ambient light system, which is pretty difficult to get in the daylight. So take a look at the stock image. You even have a type of star speckle thing going on on the dash there. It's pretty difficult to believe that anyone will be taking this vehicle off-road. Just like Range Rovers, even though they are comfortable off-roading, let's be real. People in Trinidad are already taking these vehicles off-road. But it's nice to know you can if you really wanted to. You also have an Infinity 10 speaker sound system. That sounds pretty cool. As always, I can't give a demonstration for copyright reasons. But it sounds pretty, pretty dope. In terms of safety, you have a total of 7 airbags and all the safety features that most vehicles come with. Electronic stability control, brake assist system, hill descent, descent control, ABS, EBD, TCS, RMI, ESC. Adaptive Cruise Control, Auto Emergency Brake, AEB Intersection Assist, Low Speed AEB, Front Collision Warning, Lane Departure Warning, Lane Keep Assist, Lane Central Keeping. Driver Fatigue Monitoring. There is a camera right there, you can see it right there, that literally reminds you to focus in the road if it detects that your eyes are away from the road for a certain period of time. It, the vehicle will talk and tell you, please focus on driving. I will demonstrate that in the driving portion of it. You also have tire pressure monitoring and a whole host of other features where if I put them in, this video will be over 35 minutes long. So in the interest of time, I'm going to trim it down to here. It has everything, which includes soundproof glass on the windshield, rear glass and door glasses. Now when you hear soundproof glass, it doesn't mean you're going to hear nothing at all. It means that the glass has been treated in such a way that it reflects some of the ambient noise from outside the vehicle. So when you are sitting in it, it should be a few decibels quieter than sitting in a regular vehicle. Now I should have done this test with the AC off, but hindsight. On top here, you will find your panoramic moonroof controls, open and close, both the glass and the shade, and then you have your lights. Now it don't even have a switch. For $750,000, you can't even be bothered to touch a switch. Just, just gently tap the glass and the light turns on and turns off. Behind that, you have a typical shade solar. And yes, it is lined with the same velvet from the door. Some vehicles give you that. Some don't. They just give you hard plastic. You also have vanity mirrors for the driver and passenger. Both are illuminated and both are LEDs. But let's say you have a young lady in the front seat and she gets tired of looking at the artificial stars on the dashboard. She wants to see the real thing. No problem. Just tell her recline her seat all the way back. And you flick your switch because the vehicle does have a panoramic moonroof. The glass goes all the way back to just over the rear passenger's heads. So she can lean all the way back and look up. And as far as I could see, they will just be stars. But let's talk more about those front seats because let's say she really isn't impressed. Because most vehicles have a glass roof even though this one is huge. She jumps in. The front seat starts going back by itself. It welcomes her to the vehicle. The driver has an 8-way power adjustable seat with 4-way adjustable lumbar support. While the passenger has a 6-way power adjustable seat. So she gets in, she sits down, she reclines the seat and she's looking up at the stars. But remember, she's still not impressed. So here what you're doing. You're going to the 14.6 inch infotainment screen. You're going to seat in, you're scrolling down and you're turning on the massage seats. Yes, you heard that right. The seats give you a back massage while you are driving and you actually feel it. You actually feel it pressing into your back. So you have heated and ventilated front seats that are fully powered, that have the memory function, that also gives you a massage. So let me set the scene for you. You are driving down the road, your girlfriend, your mistress, your wife, somebody's in the front seat with you. You are getting a back massage. She's also getting a back massage while in the reclined position, looking up at the stars, listening to good music. That woman will remember you till the end of time. After you, everything else is a downgrade. And every other car seat she sits in will remind her of her 80 wagon back seat. So no, it's not just a front seat. It might look like just a front seat, but it does a lot more. Moving to the center console. Yes, obviously, soft touch materials. Remember, we're going for premium and luxury. You lift it up. And you have this tray here, you can either push it forward and have a little tray to put something on, no cup holders, or you can pull it back 
expose the cup holders but then you have no tray to put anything on inside the center console itself you have this little flap here you pull it up it exposes a little hole what that does it sucks in cold air from the ac and it will keep inside of your chilled or if you have one heater it will suck in hot air and keep inside of there warm it's up to you close back the center console and this is how this little thing works you can pull it back cup holders push it forward you have a tray to the front of that you have more controls including your gear lever here is where you have your emergency parking brake or what we used to call the handbrake. You have some 4x4 controls, you can lock your diff. To the top here you have your seating controls where you want heated or ventilated. And then you have some other controls to do with your 4x4 whether you want to lock your diff or open your diff going to 4 low or 4 high. And then you have this wrong dial here. This wrong dial is for your driving modes. You have 4 high, sand, mud, snow, eco and sport. Now you can customize each one of these to take off certain characteristics and add in certain other characteristics. But if you're not into the tinkering and you're not comfortable setting different parameters, you can just choose the presets, snow, mud, high, sport, whatever you want, and the vehicle will do the rest. But more on this later on in the video. Thankfully, GWM in this vehicle, you have physical buttons for some things like fan speed. You don't have to always go to the screen to adjust your fan speed. There are actual physical buttons, your AC button, you also have your parking camera button and your cabin air recirculate on or off button. Most vehicles now are putting all of that on the infotainment screen and you have to fill with these small touch points while driving. I like physical buttons. Below that, you have this covering here, which again, premium wood grain finish. Below this is where your wireless charging pad sits. So you push it up to reveal the wireless charging pad. Then you push up again and it comes down in a dampened way. You do have a glove box. It has the velvet material inside of it, so premium feeling. But aside from that, on the driver's side, you do have a USB-C and a USB-A power outlet. Well, one is for data and one is for power. You can see the mood lighting below there. Right now it's set to purple. And you also have a 12 volt power outlet right behind that. Now you do have a leather wrap heated steering wheel with all your typical controls, but to control your tilt and telescope feature, it's powered. Cause I mean, after all, if I am spending $750,000 on a vehicle, I cannot be asked to manually adjust my steering wheel. That shit must be powered and it is powered. So you tilt the switch, you pull it forward, it comes forward, you tilt it up or down, the steering wheel goes up or down. And yes, you also do have paddle shifters just in case you want to take a bit more manual control with the nine gears at your disposal. They are there. For your instrument cluster, you have a large 12.3 inch color display. And as you can see on the right hand side, even in direct sunlight and with glare, the screen is bright enough that you are still able to read and see everything that's taking place there. So no issues when it comes to that. You have three different layouts. You have this standard layout, which shows you the road and shows you the other cars around it. Then you have a next layout, which is more for off-roading. It's an off-road focus layout where you are seeing your angle of attack, your pitch roll, you have a compass, you have where you're seeing your four-wheel lock, if your diff is locked or not. And then you have one called navigation, which overlays a map on the vehicle so you can glance down and see where you're driving and where you're going to at a glance. Now, the vehicle must be connected to the internet to get the map information. That's why you didn't see it just now there. But if you ever connected the vehicle to the internet, you would see the map overlay under the vehicle as you drive. Now, it's at this point in the review where most times i turn my attention to the driver's door and i comment on whether the vehicle has one touch up down on all the glasses or not and this vehicle being a premium vehicle you do have one touch up down on all four doors but you see that one touch up down thing forget that if you are spending this much money in a vehicle you can't be asked to lift a finger to lower your glass or raise it lower all windows Hey GWM, roll up all windows. Because if you can even afford a vehicle at this price point in the first place, you are saying to the world that your energy is better spent making even more money. Not in the mundane day-to-day -day task of rolling up and rolling down windows. Because why lift even a finger when you could just open your mouth? And the voice assistant works pretty well. She understood me, I would say, maybe 80% out of 100% of the time. Hi, GWM. Lower AC. All right. The temperature is going up by 2 degrees in the driver's seat. Turn off AC. Okay. I've turned off the AC in the driver's seat. 
And if you realize that she's saying the driver's seat, now I'm not sure if it has a pressure sensor in the driver's seat or the passenger seat, or maybe they're using the cameras, or maybe it's able to detect where the voice command is coming from. But when I went across to the passenger seat, it flipped. She is now only doing the commands for the AC in the passenger seat. So clearly it's somehow smart enough to know who is giving the commands and where to lower and where to raise the AC. Now you would think that doing all of this takes time. And yes, it does take about a second or two sometimes. But most times it just flows. For example, open maps. Open radio. Radio is already playing. Try increasing the volume. Increase volume. Volume is currently set to the minimum. Set volume to 10. Now I'm going to pause it there for copyright reasons. But I want you all to watch something. The volume was set to 10. You heard how loud it was there. So now you would think that the voice assistant should not be able to hear me if I were to give a next command. But watch this. IGWM. Lower volume. News radio. They must have microphones all over the cabin of this vehicle to be able to pick up your voice over music. That, to me, that is amazing. Because most other assistants, if somebody's even whispering in the background, it throws them off. This one is hearing you over loud music. Now, there are things that you think it should be able to do, but it can't do. Maybe they can patch that later on via a software update or something. Turn on 360 camera. I'm afraid I can't do that yet. Turn on camera. I'm afraid I can't do that yet. Turn off screen. The screen is already on. So yeah, there are some things that I still cannot do. And because of the Trini accent, there are some words it doesn't pick up the first time. Like I told it, turn off the screen. But it's still, I mean, the screen is already on. So instead of off, it heard on. But aside from that, like I said, 80% of the time, it picks up what you are saying and it does it pretty quickly. Sticking with the infotainment screen, here you have your 4x4 controls. Now, like I said, you can either pick fixed presets or you can go into it and change about different things depending on your driving mode, depending on your competency. So let's say you want to take a bit more manual control. You have a bunch of settings. This is just a few of them here. You have another screen with even more settings. You can go into here. Customize how you want the vehicle to feel when you are in 4x4, whether it's 4 high, 4 low, or 2 wheel drive. You even have some more relevant information over here. But let's say you just want presets. Well, we're going back to the presets I showed earlier on. You have 4 high, you have sand, snow, sport. Just turn the dial and it will go into whatever and the car will figure out the rest. Now, this screen is pretty cool because you have your angle of attack in terms of your pitch, your roll, you have your compass, you have how much degrees you are turning the steering wheel. So, when you turn the steering wheel, you actually see the wheels to the front there moving by how much degrees. You can see whether your diff is locked or not and you can lock it from here. So, you can lock the front or the rear. But I wasn't in gear at this point, so when I touched it, nothing happened. But if you are in gear and in the right mode, when you touch this, you will either lock the front or the back. You are even able to see your altitude and your atmosphere pressure and real-time tire pressures for all four tires. Pretty dope stuff if you are into the off-roading scene. And all of this shows up on your instrument cluster as well when you set it to be in that mode. You have your typical GWM state of the art 360 camera, especially the mode that I fell in love with after doing a review on the GT recently where you can see the front and rear wheels. Now I'm assuming this would be very handy if you're on the off-road trail, you don't want to scratch your rim, dent your car, so you can see precisely where the wheels are. But it's also helpful in the real world when you are parking or driving through tight spaces. It's also helpful here as well. Now what it looks like to me is that they scaled the screen up, but it didn't scale up the resolution. It has the same resolution that is found on the smaller screens in the smaller vehicles, but a bigger screen. So it looks less crisp than it does on the smaller screens. Now it doesn't look bad, you are seeing it here. You have all the different modes. You have a top down, you can make the vehicle invisible and just look at the lines. But it doesn't look as sharp. There's something missing when compared to what is found on the smaller screens. Now, I don't think it's the screen itself that is low resolution. I think the cameras, they are outputting a lower resolution than the screen. Because when you are in the 360 camera, you can see it. But when you're just browsing and navigating the menus and submenus of the user interface, everything goes back to high resolution. Like I'm now in the hybrid system here and you are seeing high resolution. Everything is crisp, everything is bright. But the minute you enter into the 360 camera, the resolution kind of drops. Like I say, it's not bad. You can see exactly what's taking place but you can see the difference. And typical GWM, attention to detail, you turn the indicators on, your headlights on, your brake light, everything, and you are seeing it happening in real time on the 360 camera. I will always say, car manufacturers don't have to do this, 
but they do it just because attention to detail and i love attention to detail especially in these little things now aside from that there are a ton of other settings that you can literally spend hours digging up in there are settings menus sub menus different things to set and tailor the vehicle to how you like it if i were to go into each and every one we would quite literally spend hours here so i won't go into every one but this is your infotainment and yes you do have apple carplay android auto you have bluetooth you have wi-fi or you can just plug your phone directly into the vehicle and stream your music that way so you have everything which is what you would expect in a vehicle at this price point now let's take the tank 500 out of the road and see how it drives the first thing you notice while driving the tank 500 is the commanding presence it has even as the driver sitting down looking out over that large bonnet you just feel like you are the king of the road and on top of that it is not pneumatic suspension but because the vehicle is so heavy it soaks up bumps like it's a pneumatic suspension you are going over slight road imperfections and bumps and even holes which is a characteristic of large vehicles because the vehicle is so heavy it gives the weight or the counter force pushing down to the bump trying to push the wheels up so it gives the suspension time to do what it has to do which is soak up the bumps and it's no different in the tank 500 now the tank 500 is a very heavy vehicle it's 53 plus 100 pounds so the question is what is propelling this 5300 pound behemoth forward on the road is it a v8 is it a v6 nope it's a two liter turbocharged engine but the good thing is it's a hybrid setup so the hybrid component is most powerful off the line where turbochargers are most times weak because of turbo lag so by the time the hybrid component has done what it's supposed to do and got you moving the internal combustion engine takes over you have no turbo lag you don't even feel the handover you cannot tell when the hybrid component has stopped doing its job or it's doing its job to a lesser degree and where the engine took over you just get an instant burst of power so whenever you're in the mood to unleash all 342 horsepower and 478 foot pounds of torque you just get on the accelerator pedal and you can close any gap very quickly. The way the Tank 500 works that hybrid pairing, you sometimes forget that this vehicle is this large. You get so used to it being that nimble that it's only when you step out of it you realize, wait, this vehicle is pretty big. How was it so nimble? But like I said, you can close any gap at any point whenever you feel like it just by getting on your accelerator pedal. Now the Tank 500 is by no means a sports car, but it does feel a lot more nimble than your brain thinks it should be given the size of it. Now that wasn't full extra board. This is their most premium vehicle, so I was told, go easy with it, and I was also told, don't take it too far. But just by that little taste you got there, you can see that there's no slouch. If need be, and you have to get out of dodge, as it'll say, you can get out of dodge very easily. Now, one thing that I noticed that I really didn't expect is that under heavy acceleration, you can actually hear the turbo doing its thing. Listen to this. You do hear the faint whistle of a turbocharger. It's there. But when you are inside the vehicle, you don't hear it. You only hear it from the outside. And the thing about it, even though it's this large and it doesn't have a pneumatic suspension setup which could level the vehicle in case one side is sagging, you still don't get excessive body roll when you are turning. Granted, I'm not doing any high speed turns here. We're not on the track. We're not on the autobahn. This is just simple casual driving. But if our vehicle is poorly built, even during simple casual driving, you do get excessive body roll that makes you wonder, is this a boat? What's going on here? Am I on the bokas? I left the audio on there so you can hear how whisper quiet it is inside of here. Aside from the AC making this normal AC noise, you don't hear much of what is going on on the outside. If you accelerate hard, you would hear the engine. But even then, it's a slight muffle. You don't get overbearing. Now 
I'm not sure if it's the soundproofing of the windows or if they have low noise tires fitted or maybe the cabin has extra insulation. When they set out to build a premium SUV, they really accomplished that goal because you're not even hearing any road noise. I mean, if you shut up and you remain silent long enough, obviously your brain will hone in on the closest sound, which may be the AC vents or it may be the road noise. But just generally driving, you are barely hearing wind noise and you're barely hearing road noise. Now in terms of gears, you don't have 5, 6, 7 or even 8, you have 9 gears and you don't even feel the shifts. You hear it, if you listen to it, you can hear the different shift points but you don't actually feel it, it's not jarring or jerky. Now you do have paddle shifters but I will leave those alone because in my testing, when you take control, it's not as smooth. You also do have a heads up display which is reflecting out of this little box here behind the steering wheel. That is almost impossible to get on camera but it's there. I am seeing it with my eyes as I drive the vehicle, but the camera isn't picking up on it. But when you are driving the vehicle, you can see a speed, it recognizes speed signs, you can see what direction you are traveling. It's pretty handy because you don't have to look down at the speedometer or your instrument cluster. You can just look straight ahead and all your relevant information are right there. Now obviously you have a lane keeper assist which will keep you in lane, you have a lane centering which will keep you in the center of your lane, you have emergency braking which will prevent you running into the back of somebody, cross traffic alerts, all your relevant things are there. But there's one more. Remember, you have a camera watching at all times. So if you are driving and for whatever reason you start fiddling about and you take your eyes off the road, it will realize that your eyes are no longer on the road and it will give you an actual audible voice prompt. Please concentrate mm -hmm. while driving. She also tells you to brake in case you are closing in on a vehicle. And obviously you can turn these things off if it's annoying to you. But it's there. It's an added feature. She also tells you to put on your seatbelt. It talks at various points. And that brings me to the next thing. It also has self-parking. So you can pull up to a parking lot because this vehicle is a large vehicle. There's no getting around that. And then you have that huge bonnet in front. You're just driving. I'm telling you, some drivers will be intimidated by a vehicle this big. Look at where the GoPro is mounted to the very edge of the bonnet and you can see how far it is. So parking might be an issue for some. Or maybe you just want to flex and show your car parking itself. You pull up to a spot. It's going to see the spot. And once it can fit in the spot, you press a button and the vehicle does the rest. Please fasten seat belt. Drive forward to search for parking space. Parking space found. Please apply brake. Please click start parking. Please release the brake. Intelligent parking. Pay attention to surrounding and brake if necessary. Intelligent parking suspended. So what happened there? Me, I find I was getting too close to that black pole. All these vehicles that we tested here always get close to it and I always get worried but because this bonnet is so huge I was extra worried so I hit the brake and it suspended the automatic parking. Release the brake. Intelligent parking resumed. Please confirm with the t intelligent parking. Pay attention to surrounding and brake if necessary. Complete. And yes, I'm sure there are many of you in the comments typing right now, but I can park faster than that. Look how long it took. Yes, I'm sure you can park faster than that, but it's a feature. And there are people out there who will use that feature. As a matter of fact, I will use that feature just because it's a flex. So don't knock the flex. There are people out there who are flexing with chrome rims and drop low vehicles. So I think this is up there in the top 10 of top flexes you can have with a vehicle, vehicle parking itself. One last thing I want to share because there are so many things I had to leave out a lot of things just in the interest of time. Watch the side mirrors as they adjust from down to back up and straight when the vehicle is going forward. And then watch them adjust back to down so you can see the back better when you are in reverse again. These 
are adjustable with these seats remember these seats have memory so if you have more than one person who drive the vehicle let's say two or three you can set not only the seat position as a memory but you can also set the memory function to the side mirrors as well so when you put the vehicle in reverse it will either tilt down to your predetermined setting or tilt up or tilt out they thought of everything now i've seen this on other vehicles before but i haven't seen it in a long while let's talk to him the Tank 500 has a max braked towing capacity of 6,614 pounds. Now, braked is when you are towing something that is on a trailer and the trailer has its own brakes. Unbraked is always a lower number because now you are no longer using the trailer's brakes, you are using the brakes on the vehicle itself. So, unbraked, you can tow 1,653 pounds. In terms of fuel economy, you have a tank size of 80 liters, which you fill with premium gas, and with that, you can get an estimated 630 kilometers of range. Now, you are not going to be filling the full 80 liters right through. You're never going to run your vehicle down to bone dry. So, let's say you're only filling 75 liters. That's just about $581 to full, and with that, you're getting 630 kilometers of range. I know what you're thinking. Only 630 kilometers of range. My car is getting more than that. You have a car. This is a 5300 pound vehicle. It's not a car. Obviously, you won't get the same gas mileage as you get in your Toyota Aqua. Just putting that out there, Karen. And that was the Tank 500. Now, I know what you are asking. Is it worth buying for that price? After all, it's not a cheap vehicle. This vehicle is $750,950. But the fully loaded RAV4, which is a hybrid, is actually $3,000 more than this last time I checked. And with this, you're getting a larger vehicle, more space, more off-roading capabilities, and a lot more of everything. And then on top of that, you are getting free service for five years or 100,000 kilometers. You are also getting six years warranty or 150,000 kilometers. And the warranty on the hybrid battery is eight years. So when you take these things into consideration, it's not, is it worth it to you? Is, is it worth it to you because you were already in the market for a vehicle at this price point? If that's the case, then have a look at it. Because even though it's a Chinese company, it's a pretty well-built vehicle. And those who are talking about the Chinese don't make good things. Always remember, even the premium products in your house came from China. Like your iPhone, like your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. They know how to make good things when they have to. And I think in this case, they knew they had to, so they made a good product. It's well-built. It feels sturdy, it performs well. All of these things clearly showed that they knew the juggernauts that they were going up against once they entered the ring at this segment. They knew they were going up against and they had to make a statement piece. And that is exactly what the Tank 500 is. A statement piece to show that GWM could ramp with the big boys.